So we've looked at multiplication of rational expressions first. Did that intentionally because now we're going to look at division and it relies heavily on multiplication. So a few things that we want to talk about. Two expressions are reciprocals of each other. So what does it mean to be a reciprocal? Taking it and flipping it upside down. And if we multiply something times its recipro reciprocal, its product is 1. If I multiply something times flipping it upside down, I'm going to get out 1. So the reciprocal of a rational expression is found by interchanging the numerator and the denominator. We're flipping it upside down. What was up top is now down below. What's down below is now up top. So let's just run through a few of these simple cases just so we can uh, make sure you understand what the reciprocal actually is. So the reciprocal of two-fifths is what? Flipping it upside down, five halves. The reciprocal of this rational expression is flipping it upside down. So x plus four becomes the numerator and two x squared minus three is now the denominator. Taking it, flipping it upside down. And you can see if we multiply these together, we get out one. If I multiply these together, everything cancels, we get out one. And down here, I don't have a denominator right now, but how could I rewrite this polynomial as a rational expression? As a fraction, I can put it over one. So when I look at the reciprocal of x minus five, it's one over x minus five. And again, you can see if we multiply them together, everything cancels out, we get out one. So we use that to actually divide rational expressions because division is really like multiplication. So to divide a rational expression, we multiply by its reciprocal. Okay, because division is really like multiplying by the reciprocal. We saw that in the beginning of the class. But just to hone in on that, if I have this relationship, what holds true? I can take the first one exactly how it is, that never changes, and I can multiply by the reciprocal of the second one. So D over C. And we know how to handle this case. We just go straight across the top and straight across the bottom. So it's division is really just one extra step from multiplication. We have to flip the second term and change the operation. So let's work through a few simple examples. Division here. Again, I can keep the first one the same, turn it into multiplication, and I need the reciprocal of the second one. So what is the reciprocal of this guy? Five over nine. And we can multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom, and be able to simplify. We could have even started to simplify before we multiply them together. Doesn't really matter. But what do we get out? Three goes into nine three times. So up top I'm left with five, and down below, four times three is 12. And we simplified as far as we can go. A Little bit more complicated, but the same story as multiplication. I'm gonna group together what comes together, just so I don't make any mistakes. First one isn't going to change. Top is still the top, bottom is still the bottom, but the second one, now my multiplying by its reciprocal. So what's up top now? X plus three, and what's down below? X minus one. So as we look top and bottom and cross, is there anything that they share in common that we can get rid of? No. So when we multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom, nothing simplifies. But it's good to leave it in this factored form because we can see that nothing is going to cancel. If we had multiplied it all back together, it's a little bit harder to notice if they have any factors in common. All right, one more. So again, grouping together what comes together, just like we did before. First one is staying the same, but I'm going to go ahead and factor everything as we go, because we need to do that to be able to cancel. So up top, x plus 1, that's not changing. He's already factored. But down below, what is this? A difference of squares. 
and it factors into x plus 1, x minus 1. So automatically right now we already have one factor we can get rid of. And I'm multiplying by the reciprocal of the second one. So what's up top is already factored. He's done. And where does he live now? Down below. And up top lives this polynomial. And we need to factor it if we can. So let's try. Got a 1 on the front and a 1 on the back. So I know that my only options are 1 and 1 since it's prime. And I need it to multiply to a positive and add to a negative. So I know both of these need to be negative. So as we multiply straight across the top, straight across the bottom now, nothing's going to change. I'm just going to connect my lines together. Everything's being multiplied. So what can we cancel out? Common top and bottom. x plus 1 over x plus 1. x minus 1 over x minus 1. These two we can't because one's negative and one's positive. So what are we left with? Up top, x minus 1, down below, x plus 1. And when we leave it in the factored form, it's easiest to see. Can we break it down any farther? So go ahead and take the next two, divide and simplify those rational expressions. So the first one, what had to happen? Group together what comes together, so we don't make that mistake. And we need to factor this numerator. So what's common between these two terms that we can take out of both? factor of x. When we do that, we're left with x plus 5. Denominator, we'll just leave it as it is. So that one stays the same. Nothing flips around. But I need to change division into multiplication. So I need to multiply by the reciprocal of this thing. Flipping it upside down. So now 18x lives up top. And this binomial lives down below. And how does it factor? x plus 5 and x minus 5. So now we can look, see if anything cancels, and eventually multiply. You could multiply it all together now. Order doesn't really matter. So what's common? x plus 5 over x plus 5. That'll be gone. And I have x and x in the top. We can't cancel those because it needs to be on top of each other or diagonal. But what else? 6 goes into 18 three times. Is there anything else that we can simplify? Nope. So what are we left with when we multiply straight across the top? I've got 3 and 2 factors of x being multiplied. So 3x squared. And down below, all of these canceled out. We're just left with x minus 5. Simplified as far as we can go. And the last one, again, first one isn't going to change. Nothing flips around, but we can factor. The top one is a difference of squares, so those are able to factor. And down below, it's already broken down as far as we can go. And I need, again, to change division into multiplication. So I need to multiply by the reciprocal of this thing. So y plus 1 now lives in the numerator. And in the denominator, how does this factor? Got a y in each, since we have a coefficient 1. 1 is prime, and I need it to multiply to be positive, but add to be negative. So both need to be negative. So as we're looking, common between top and bottom, that factor, y minus 1. What else? y plus 1, and we're left with y plus 1 over y minus 1. Simplified as far as we can go.